Spirit Tomb has zero usage competitively because it's kind of an awkward Pokemon. Its Ghost Dark typing gives it only one weakness to Fairy, which is solid, and it has decent defensive stats with 108 in both. But its low HP definitely brings it down. Its best use is to try to be bulky support with things like Will-O-Wisp to cripple physical attackers, and it can actually set up with Calm Mind to boost its special attack and special defense. Boosted Dark Pulses can start to hit pretty hard, and it can even take advantage of Pain Split to steal some HP to stay alive. Overall, I do think Spiritomb can be better than people think, especially when it seems impossible to kill. So even being you know, not one of the most popular Pokemon competitively, Spiritomb it is one of my favorite ghost types, and I'm here to show the thing some love today. If you're into that kind of thing, you should consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, and you can help me on my way to 400k. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the elephant that looks like it swallowed one of those old school televisions. And I am going to lead off with the Quagsire. I figure, I feel pretty safe against this. They don't have any grass potential. And Quagsire is the average gamer. We do not want to be touching any grass, and so that feels pretty safe. Now, at this point, I figure with the Copperaja lead, they probably just want to set up their Stealth Rock. And we're going to take this opportunity to go ahead and compare sizes. I do set up my Stealth Rock as uh, I go first because Copperaja is about slow as hell. As a steel elephant, buddy, it looks like he belongs in Minecraft and this thing is slow as hell. So at this point, I do have the upper hand on the matchup as I can just go right for an Earthquake. And a Stab Earthquake is going to be a nice little two-hit KO there. I get a big old chunk of damage as they actually end up going for the knockoff, which does get rid of my Rocky Helmet, but you do get poked right in the trunk first and I get a little bit more chip there, which is pretty nice. So at this point, I don't really imagine they stay in here. The next Earthquake is obvious. They do have potential to switch into something like potentially the Noivern. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just go for a layer of spikes here. As it turns out, this thing is going to protect. Just wants to scout out what I'm going to go for here. You grab another bite of the leftovers. But I just sprinkle some spikes over there and the hazards are starting to stack up. I do want to prioritize the hazards just because uh, they don't have an easy method of getting rid of it unless it's like a defog Noivern, which case it should mostly be fine. So here I'm thinking, okay, Quagsire, I can Earthquake again or I could go for more spikes or I could try to get something going as I'm actually going to end up switching into the Whimsicott here. So I'm going to predict them to go into the Noivern where, you know, Whimsicott does have the upper hand on the type matchup at that point and also if it's going to be a defog Noivern, they probably want to bring that thing in as uh, I could have just stayed in there and gone for more spikes. So they are going to switch out the Copperaja, and they do in fact end up bringing in the freaking Speaker Bat, and Noivern comes in here. So the problem with Noivern is it does frisk me, seize the red card, but also this thing is faster than Whimsicott, and I can get hit by a Flamethrower, but I know that I take at least one of them. So if this Noivern does want to try to blow away my hazards, I can hit him with a Moonblast. But they actually go for the Hurricane, and it misses, because... Hurricane literally never hits, and that does allow me to hit it with a Moonblast, however, it does actually live it. So, uh, it's got enough damage to the point where it's gonna need to defog away the Stealth Rock if it wants to come back in. And also, I'm like, you know what, I should probably try to keep that red card intact. I'm actually just gonna get out of here, and I'm gonna go right into the uh, Jirachi. Seeing that they went for the Hurricane there tells me they maybe do not have the Flamethrower coverage, so I can bring in Jirachi here, and they do end up landing the Hurricane, which is fine because our little Steel-type friend doesn't take much damage. However, I do get freaking confused. The damn ducks of death circling around our head is annoying, and we're getting a little bit of a taste of what Jirachi is trying to do to other people. I end up getting the luck on the other side, and I end up hitting myself in the face, which is annoying. So, I do reveal that I'm Choice Scarf at that point because I was faster. It shouldn't really be that big of a deal, but this thing now goes for the roost, and I'm like, well, damn it. I did not expect some, some healing over here, and at this point, Jirachi is just going to try for another attack here. I am faster. And I am able to break through the confusion. Now, it doesn't do enough damage to knock it out, but of course, we do get that flinch. 60% flinches with Jirachi is absolutely insane. This thing has literally been terrorizing people <laughs> since, since Jirachi got access to Iron Head, which is wild. So, they decide now to switch. They know that they're going to be outsped and the Noivern's going to get knocked out. So, they actually go into the Slowbro here, who does do a pretty damn good job at checking the Jirachi. Obviously, resists both of my dual stab. And as I do break through the confusion, luckily, Iron Head is not going to do much. Old thick-ass Slowbro over here is looking looking pretty pretty defensive. And it also has the Rocky Helmet, which does hurt me a little bit. So Jirachi at half health. I do consider maybe saving it in the back for being able to go for like a, a trick against the uh, Slowbro. And also, as I'm looking at the matchups, Spiritomb does look really nice here. I don't want to go into it too early, however, uh, just because Spiritomb is going to re rely on some setup. So 
First of all, I can actually just go into the Quagsire. If I'm them, I probably just click Scald, and it, that's exactly what happens. I soak it up like a damn Quagsire sponge, and now I'm just kind of free to go for another layer of spikes and just kind of see what they want to do here. So, this low bro doesn't have much business staying in here, so I'm going to go for another layer of spikes as they do go back into the Neuvern, who is in fact uh, wearing the heavy duty boots, as we noted earlier. Does not take the hazard uh, chip, but I can just lay some more spikes down. Even tells me more that this has got to be a defog <laughs> Neuvern here. So, I'm actually just going to stay in and go for the Toxic, as it turns out they're going to go for a Roost. This thing is trying to stay alive like no other, and now it's chilling at uh, like almost full health. But uh, I am at least able to get the Toxic off, which is going to put this thing, you know, on a timer. And Quagsire, other than that, cannot touch this thing really at all. I can uh, Earthquake nothing, or I can switch out of here, or I can try to lay down some more spikes. Regardless, Quagsire is kind of just stagnant at this point, so I decided to just go right back into the Jirachi. I imagine the Defog comes on this turn, I can then outspeed with Jirachi, potentially, you know, predict, like, the Slowbar to come back in and try to trick it and just do some general shenanigans with the Jirachi. So, as I come in here, they actually end up going for the Super Fang. This thing is all-out utility-ass Neuvern. Super Fang always does uh, half of your HP, so that's a good move against the Quagsire, but it, Jirachi actually uh, is kind of the best recipient of being Super Fang, does not have much health anyway. And at this point, Jirachi looking adorable, I decide to go for the trick here, kind of thinking their best answer is going to be that Slowbro. But instead, this little fiery, ghostly fellow is going to come in, and the Hisuian Typhlosion is, uh, I'm kind of honestly thinking this thing is going to be Choice Scarfed itself, so we're just going to basically trade Scarfs here. Uh, however, as I give them the Choice Scarf, it turns out that this thing is going to be a heavy-duty boot. So, Buddy's got boots all over the damn place, and now Jirachi is out here styling on him in the Tims. So, uh, now at least I'm not choiced, so I'm kind of free to go for the Zen Headbutt here. However, the Typhlosion is going to be able to outspeed, and the Infernal Parade is going to knock me out. So, giving him the Choice Scarf allows it to be fast, and Jirachi pays the price. So, I'm kind of fine with that trade-off. Jirachi wasn't super useful here, but what that does do is really opens up some options for me. I know that their Choice Scarf, and I also know that they're locked into a Ghost move. So, I actually have the absolute Smeargle of Death on my side here, and this is going to be a free opportunity um, for me to go for the Shell Smash. They are forced to switch here. They cannot stay in and go for that Ghost move, and so it's time to absolute smash the living shit out of our non-existing Shell here. So... They actually decide to go into the Iron Thorns, and this thing is unfortunate, at least for the Smeargle, just because Population Bomb is resisted. But in a lot of ways, this Smeargle does not really give a shit. So we actually do see the Booster Energy Quark Drive going to activate the Attack Boost, as I am going to go ahead and go full Clam on him, pause with the, uh, with the nice little Shell Smash there. So I now get plus two Attack and Speed, and we are full Offensive Smeargle, which is fun because a lot of the time Smeargle is just used for general utility, like a Focus Sash, and then just you know, tries to put something to sleep, but now I'm extremely fast, and I can actually go for the Spore. While I can't Population Bomb yet, I know that it's going to take two uh, to knock this thing out. So I put him to sleep, and they are going to burn off that mandatory turn of sleep. So the bad news is they do have a chance to try to wake up here, but at least I can get a Population Bomb off, and with 10 hits, literally any of them can crit, and I can maybe grab a kill here if Smeargle is feeling feisty. So I go for that Population Bomb, just straight up throw some little... Dog Ross children out here, and it is, even with the 10 hits, not quite going to be able to do enough to crazy Mecha Tyranitar here. So, it barely hangs on, and the worst case scenario is it actually wakes up, and the <laughs> turn one wake is annoying, allows him to now go for the Ice Punch, which actually does finish me off, because Smeargle, especially after a Shell Smash, has literally zero defense. So, Smeargle's not going to quite get the spotlight today. But sometimes that's the way it goes. So I really want to go into Spirit Tomb here, but I do not want it to take a damage early. I, I know that uh, the Spirit Tomb has a great matchup kind of in this late game. They do still have all six of their Mons left. So I want to try to time getting that thing in to potentially set up because more and more as I take care of threats like this, uh, like this Iron Thorns, it's looking like I'm going to be able to try to bring that thing in later as a potential win condition. So Giga Drain going to finish that thing off. Luckily, it didn't have a speed boost. So our speedy little cotton fellow finishes it off, and now they unfortunately get a revenge switch into whatever they like. So they actually end up going into the Crocodile. Now, this thing does take some nice solid chip from the hazards, but at this point I'm kind of thinking, what is this thing going to really do to me? So I'm just going to go right for the Giga Drain. I'm feeling like they probably bust out a Terra, but they actually outspeed. They are going to be able to gunk shot, and that does connect, and that tells me that this thing is choice scarfed as hell. And that is kind of scary. So now it actually gets a Moxie boost, plus one attack, 
with that Choice Scarf is scary. So I have a couple different options here. I could go into Quagsire, who obviously takes a gunk shot, but this is actually a perfect opportunity to go into the Spirit Tomb. It's currently a 3-5 game. They still have five mons left, but I have a Spirit Tomb, and that means it is far from over. So as I bring this thing in, I know that they're locked into gunk shot, and plus I'm fully defensive here, and I resist that. So I'm thinking this is the perfect opportunity to try to set up a Calm Mind. Uh, but they actually end up going ahead and busting out the Terra. I'm kind of not really worried about a Terra. It does turn out to be uh, Terra Poison, which is going to give it a nice little boost to that Gunk Shot. And they probably imagine with that Moxie, this is going to do a round half to me and be like a two-hit KO. Now, they do actually connect on the Gunk Shot, but Spirit Tomb is a defensive beast. We have no HP, but we have hella defense, and I'm able to take that extremely nicely. And that is going to allow me to set up my Calm Mind. So... The idea behind the Spirit Tomb is to basically just be extremely annoying to kill. I have great, you know, natural defenses, and then with that Calm Mind, special defense is looking pretty solid as well. So, uh, at this point now, I can just go for another Calm Mind. I'm like, you know what, I want to get potentially low enough to where I can actually, you know, Pain Split and get a bunch of health back. So, as I go for uh, Calm Mind number two, they're actually going to go right back into the Noivern. So, my mind is about calm as hell out here. And we're feeling pretty zen. So at plus two special defense, I know that I can even take a Draco Meteor pretty well from this thing. And uh, again, Spirit Team with the longevity in having the pain split is super nice because even if I do get knocked down low and they go into like a full health threat, I can really get a lot of health back and make myself even harder to kill. So that's kind of the plan. But first of all, this thing's already at half health. So I'm like, okay, I kind of need to just get some damage off here. It turns out they actually have Taunt on the Noivern. They are going to go for that just because... They see the setup, and they're like, okay, I'm going to try to stop this thing in tracks. Uh, but luckily, I am able to finish it off with the Dark Pulse. So, look, Spirit Tomb at, you know, over half health with two Calm Mines and max HP and defense. This thing is an absolute nightmare to kill. And if you want to try to do it with a physical attacker, you're going to have to risk also getting will o -Wisp. So, they go back into the Crocodile, who can, of course, now change its moves. It is no longer locked into that Gunk Shot and they realize the defensive potential. So they're actually just gonna end up going for the knockoff. They wanna get rid of the leftovers, uh, the recovery is annoying, and that does a nice little chunk of damage, but honestly, I take it pretty well, and then I can just fire off a Dark Pulse and finish it. So, gotta love slow Pokemon that are able to just set up and get like weird little sweeps going on. So that takes care of the Crocodile, and even without my leftovers, I'm still feeling pretty safe. Now here's the reason. as they do, of course, still have the Hisuian Typhlosion. The remaining two Pokemon being the uh, Kaparaja and the Slowbro, I am still in a great spot here. So, as the Typhlosion comes in, it does connect on a Fire Blast, but thanks to the Calm Mind boost, I'm actually just barely able to hang on, and now a Dark Pulse finishes off uh, the probably the most the scariest remaining threat here. So Typhlosion goes down, and we are just Dark Pulsing all over the damn place. I do also. Uh, shake off the taunt, which is important to note, and we're out here hanging on by a damn thread. Now here's the funniest part. Spiritomb is an extremely slow Pokemon. I have base 35 speed. Now, Kaparaja is actually an even slower Pokemon. I think it has base 30, so I'm actually gonna be able to outspeed here, but they, they end up going for the Protect, just to kind of, I guess, just see what I'm looking for here. Doesn't really matter, the Protect just kind of stalls it out here. The inevitable, I literally, I'm, I'm literally anchored to a damn rock, and I'm still... <laughs> Faster than this metal elephant, which is the funniest thing ever. They do get another turn of leftover recovery, and uh, it's not going to help them. With plus two special attack, we are out here doing damage. I'm able to outspeed the Kaparaja, and that takes care of it. So literally, at almost no health, this Spirit Tomb is coming in extremely clutch. Now, also, their final Pokemon, being the Slowbro, is notoriously a pretty slow fella. So again, I'm literally attached to a thousand pound rock over here but i'm still faster than the slow bro i can then fire off the dark pulse and that is gonna finish off the slow bro and also the game so really put the team on our back here with the spirit tomb didn't even need to bust out the utility in the form of the uh, will o -Wisp or the pain split but sometimes you gotta just get a slow ghost to sweep and it's extremely satisfying so that's gonna be the end of that one but you already know we have game number two out here because this thing is honestly pretty fun to use and not a lot of people are putting enough respect on this bad boy. So, in this matchup, we actually have a pretty interesting looking team we're going up against, and this is a really good match. So, let's go ahead and jump into it. This time, my opponent's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Deoxys defense. This thing is thick as a bowl of oatmeal, and 
as a lead, these generally function as kind of just setting up hazards and just being here to never die. So I'm gonna just go ahead and lead off with the Quagsire. They do have some potential grass threats, but this is fine. I'm just gonna go ahead, take this opportunity to set up my Stealth Rock. I imagine they're just gonna go for something like spikes of their own, which is why, you know, me setting up my hazards, I'm like, if they wanna defog with Corviknight and get rid of it later, that's fine, they're gonna get rid of their own. But it turns out, as they go for the, uh, the light screen there, this thing is going to be kind of a dual screen set likely with that light clay. So now they set up the reflect and they are officially behind the dual screens which is gonna make uh, my offense much more or less potent. So I go for the toxic just because it's kind of the most surefire way to guarantee this asshole doesn't stick around all day and just like recover and stuff. So I can put it on a little bit of a timer there and the toxic is honestly super helpful. So I'm not really sure what this thing wants to do at this point, but I'm not really comfortable switching. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set up a layer of spikes as it's pretty much what uh, what Quagsire does. Reverse Santa, Santa Claus just laying down some presents that are gonna hurt you every time you come down the hallway. And uh, <laughs> they actually take this opportunity to go for the teleport. This thing is, I believe, one of the still last Pokemon that retains teleport. Honestly, a really good momentum move because it's always slow and um, it allows you to get in a matchup basically for free. So they decide to go into the Lurantis and I do not wanna be absolutely cut the hell up and put into Quagsire Soup with a Leaf Blade. So I can actually just go into the Whimsicott here. I imagine they're probably gonna go for the Grass move. These things with Contrary, a lot of the time do like to potentially superpower and get an attack boost. Uh, but they do go for that Leaf Blade. It does cut up some cotton a little bit, but I'm like, hey, actually, that's illegal. Get your ass out of here. I red card it. And that is gonna draw in a random teammate, which is always kind of a, a fun way to just stir the pot a little bit, as this actually ends up bringing in the Tyranitar. So. Tyranitar is in a little bit of a weird position in this matchup, right? Because it takes some good hazard damage, it's got some solid chip, and I still figure, you know, a Moonblast is definitely a two-hit KO, and I don't know what this thing has to be able to knock me out. So, I'm actually gonna go for a little bit of a risky maneuver here. Now, I can't go for any prankster things because of the fact that this is dark type, but I expect them to switch, so I'm like, I'm gonna go for the Leech Seed anyway, but they actually stay in, and I see why. And that's because it's a Dragon Dance Tyranitar, and I have now been bamboozled, so Prankster not working against dark types is unfortunate in this situation, but also I really just didn't think they were going to stay in with this thing because I didn't know what they were going to really do. Set up Tyranitar is definitely not as popular as it once was, but at this point it is now chilling at plus one attack and speed, and uh, it is going to be faster. They're actually going to go for a second Dragon Dance behind screens. It makes sense that they're going to set this thing up, and uh, Wim's got really... I really got myself... It's kind of a shitty spot with the Whimsicott, but I go for the Moonblast just to do as much damage as possible, and it's not quite going to do enough to uh, knock this thing out. But away goes the Reflect, which is good. They're running out of screens, and I'm trying to consider if I want to save the Whimsicott. It does look pretty helpful, so I actually decide to swap here. So look, staring in the face of a plus two attack Tyranitar, and it's going to be faster than everything, is extremely scary. But what I can do is actually bring in the Salamence, who's gonna scare this thing with that Intimidate, at least bring it down to plus one attack. And I do kind of have to sack the Salamence because a Rock Blast uh, does end up knocking me out. That actually does tell me this thing, at least a little bit about what it's gonna be working with. Rock Blast, likely gonna be the loaded dice there. And uh, at this point, I have a few options that I could go into. I decide, here's the best course of action. I can go into the Golurk here. And while I am weak to like a stab crunch potential, I actually feel like I kind of have to commit the Terra. I've got myself in a little bit of a shithole here. I gotta kind of I gotta crawl my way out of it. And one way to do that, I'm gonna go for the Terra Fighting. So you already know this Golurk with the Terra Fighting Dynamic Punch is ready to absolutely give some knuckle sandwiches out here. So I go Terra Fighting just because I'm trying to lure uh, the super effective Dark move. They actually go for the knockoff here and that's not even gonna do half, which is great. Uh, it does get rid of my Choice Band, which is kind of annoying, but honestly, being able to dynamic punch this thing into hell is perfect because I did not want to be swept by a freaking Tyranitar today. So down that thing goes. I did have to commit the Terra on the Golurk. Um, and the bad news is I did take some solid chip and at least they are going to have a lot that is going to be faster than me. So now they go back into the Deoxys. I, I figure they probably just want to go ahead and reset the, uh, the screens at this point. But it does come in. It takes a little bit of chip and it's poisoned. And I'm like, well, this doesn't seem like a bad opportunity to go into Spirit Tomb. Honestly, if it just wants to, uh, if it wants to set up screens, that's kind of the best way to try to set this Spirit Tomb up. I need to bring it in against something that I can safely set up and not have to worry about taking too much damage. We've already seen 
uh, teleport along with the two screens. So I imagine they probably just have like a psychic stab uh, at the uh, the last slot there. So as I bring in Spirit Tomb, I'm like set up all the screens you want. So you're gonna have some trouble at knocking out this Spirit Tomb in the long run. So. This thing also being badly poisoned does make my life just a whole lot easier here. So I come in, I'm at full health, and I'm feeling like the, on top of the damn world with the Spirit Tomb. So they now go for the light screen. After that reflect, it is just gonna basically give me a free turn to set up that Calm Mind. Now, this thing generally does at least need one Calm Mind because while I am uh, max HP and defense with the plus defense nature, I got the physical side covered, but I just need at least one special defense boost to be able to take meaningful attacks there. So that's exactly what we needed. And also, now this Deoxys is in range to not have a good time with Dark Pulses, but I'm like, you know what? I don't really have a reason not uh, to actually just go for another Combine. Kind of looking at what they have left, Spirit Tomb still feels pretty safe here just because I don't know what this thing has to kind of threaten me offensively. So I now go for a second one. That's going to double my special attack and my special defense and they are just going to go for that teleport. So that's just going to give them uh, the switch initiative there, and they can go into whatever they want against the Spirit Tomb. And they decide to go into the Lurantis. So Buddy is late to the Disco because this shit has already started, and it is already chilling at like half after that hazard. So I'm really kind of feeling like I could potentially try to get a Will-O-Wisp here and maybe try to make it so that I can you know, outlive this thing, pain split it later on, and try to just work my way into as many calm minds as possible. Uh, they actually end up going for the synthesis, so that brings it back to full, but I'm kind of fine with that because now with the burn, uh, it's not going to be able to touch me really at all. This thing has 108 base defense and it doesn't have much HP, but it's enough to be able to take attacks from anything, especially if they're burnt. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get greedy out here. And I really feel like I can go for another combine. It's really not a reason not to, as uh, they actually just go for the knockoff. So losing my leftovers does kind of suck for Spirit Tomb, just because it's uh, at least my most reliable form of recovery, other than with the pain split, which is pretty situational. But it honestly still feels like a free combine. Now I'm sitting at plus three, and this is the type of situations where Spirit Tomb will get out of hand on you if you don't assess the situation quickly. So the reflect wears off, doesn't really matter. Um, but here I'm like, okay, I need to start just going for some damage. As they Leaf Blade, that does <laughs> literally nothing, um, which is amazing. Also, my Dark Pulse doesn't do much, especially with that uh, light screen up. But hey, that's fine. Spirit Tomb's just here to just wear you down slowly but surely. Now the light screen wears off. I honestly should have Calm Minded again, but I'm like, four just kind of seems unnecessary, and I'm going to surely take Leaf Blades uh, back to back. So they do actually end up getting a crit, as uh, luckily I'm able to then finish it off with a Dark Pulse. So while that thing is now taken care of, Spirit Tomb's goal is to try to have some longevity. Stay alive and then punch as many holes in the opposing team as possible. So they now decide to go into the Corviknight, and honestly their best bet is now hitting me on the physical side just because of all the combines I have. And so I'm thinking about it, Brave Bird, if they have it, is going to be the highest stab that it can hit me with. It turns out they are going to bust out the Brave Bird, but I take that extremely nicely as they now have to take some recoil. And that's going to allow me to go for the Pain Split, brings me back extremely healthy, and uh, we're feeling pretty solid about that. If, if Brave Bird is their best mode of hitting this thing, we are in a pretty good spot. So they actually now just decide to go for the Roost, and it's kind of a game you're going to lose against Spirit Tomb, man. They've seen that I have the will o -Wisp, and my Dark Pulse is now doing well over half. It's a two-hit KO with the Dark Pulse. I don't even need to get the Will-O-Wisp off. I just need to try to have as much health as possible. So they go for one more Brave Bird here, and uh, I'm really kind of feeling like Spirit Team's probably not going to live this entire match out, but I can at least take care of the, the freaking Corviknight, and that's always an extremely annoying Pokemon for me. So with that thing gone, uh, they are, they've lost a nice defensive option, and now they decide to go into the Hisuian Electrode. So... This little fella is extremely fast and hits pretty hard on the special side, but at the health I'm at, 59 AP, HP is not a lot. But with three Calm Minds, I can take one Thunderbolt, which is amazing, and then I can just finish this thing with that Dark Pulse. I figured it was kind of risky to go for the Pain Split. I just want the kill on their fastest Pokemon, and down goes the Electrode. So, sadly at this point, we are very low in HP, and uh, Colossal comes in, and this big fat boy... Well, it doesn't look like it is going to be definitely faster than my freaking ghost tied to the rock. So it can now try to just go for the stab flamethrower. And sadly, that is going to be enough to take care of me. The calm mines cannot save me there. It would have been literally insane had I been able to get off the pain split there. But Colossal finishes me off, but not before the spirit tomb was able to absolutely just do its job perfectly. 
So at this point, they're actually only down to two Pokemon left. They have this Colossal along with the Deoxys in the back. And as I bring in the Golurk, I kind of imagine they might switch into Deoxys here, expecting the Dynamic Punch because that's what they've seen. And just the big old fist on my head is an indicator of what the hell this thing wants to click. However, they actually end up going for the Terra Water. This is likely going to be kind of a similar Colossal to how I was working with that one time. It's going to be like a steam engine trying to get... Uh, yeah, dry in some water attacks, but it now can go for the Stab Scald. Luckily, it does not get the burn. Honestly, burn there would have been pretty annoying, but I go for the Earthquake just because it's a good middle ground play. Uh, it kills the Colossal if it doesn't tear him, and if they switch to the Deoxys, Deoxys expecting the Dynamic Punch, we have a good time. But uh, sadly, this thing is still going to be faster. The Scald does finish off the Golurk, which is mostly fine. I did at least draw out the Terra, and with the Final Mon being the Deoxys, they got two slow fellas in the back. And luckily, I have been able to conserve uh, the Jirachi. So, Scarf Jirachi is going to work really well as kind of a late game cleanup because I'm obviously faster than this boy and the Deoxys in the back. And while I can't really go for Iron Head, I mean, I could. It just, I, I'm just going to go for Zen Headbutt because it guarantees the kill. Uh, Iron Head does have the higher chance to flinch, though, and I probably should have just Iron Headed. But down goes the Colossal. And with their final Mon left being the full on support Deoxys, I imagine they probably don't have anything that they can do to. <laughs> the Jirachi, so I can kind of just sit here and just slam into him with my freaking star head all day. You know, a couple Zen headbutts should be able to do it paired with that poison, and they are just going to actually end up running because there's no kind of win condition there, and that is going to be the end of the game. So that was a super fun match. It's always fun to get uh, Spirit Tomb to do things, and I uh, had a good time with it. Let me know if you guys enjoyed. Definitely leave a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see for future videos, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.